Today we're going to be taking a look at trig ratios on the coordinate plane. So let's consider an angle whose terminal side goes through the point 3, 4. We're going to call that angle theta. 3, 4, there's the point 3, 4, and the terminal side of this angle goes through that point. Okay, so here's the angle right here. I'm going to form a right triangle using this as the hypotenuse, and I'm going to always, always draw a perpendicular line to the x-axis. Always to the x-axis, never to the y-axis. Okay, always to the x-axis. So your right angle will always fall right on your x-axis. So, I know that this side is of length 3, and this side is of length 4. What is the side, what is the um, length of the hypotenuse? Well, this is a 3, 4, 5 right triangle, so that hypotenuse has length 5. This is theta. Okay, now we can find all of the trig functions use trig functions of that theta, the theta described by this situation, which is an angle that goes to the point 3, 4. We can find all of those trig values. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, 4 over 5. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, 3 over 5. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, 4 over 3. Cosecant is the flip of sine, so hypotenuse over opposite, 5 over 4. Secant is the um, reciprocal of cosine, so hypotenuse over adjacent, 5 over 3. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, so um, adjacent over opposite, 3 over 4. Okay, let's do the same process for um, an angle whose terminal side passes through the point negative 2, 3. Negative 2, 3. So here's the point negative 2, positive 3. It's up there. So there's the terminal side. The initial side is over here, right? The angle theta is right here. This is theta right here. Okay. However, to find the trig values, we can use what is called the reference angle of theta. The reference angle of theta is formed by forming an angle always with the x-axis from this. You're always going to drop a perpendicular to the x-axis. The reference angle is this acute angle. It's always acute, so it's less than 90 degrees. This right here is the reference angle of that angle. Okay? So, this length, this length here is 2. This length of this leg is 3. The hypotenuse has length the square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared, that's 9 plus 4, 13. Square root of 13 is the hypotenuse length. Okay, so we would like to find sine, cosine, tangent, etc. of this angle. Of this angle, but we're going to be using this triangle to do it. To do that, we need to be very wary, very, very careful with our signs. Okay. This length is on the is in the positive y direction. True. So it's a positive three. The length is three. We we assign it a positive three because it's going in the positive y direction. This length though, the length is two. However, it's going in the negative x direction. This was a negative 2, right? It's going in the negative x direction. Watch what happens when I sign that a negative 2. 
When I do that, it's going to make our signs be correct, okay? So, the hypotenuse. Well, the hypotenuse is always positive. Always positive. No matter which quadrant you go in, the hypotenuse when you do that is always positive. So, let's take a look. Sine of theta. Sine of theta, we're using this triangle. Sine of theta will be opposite over hypotenuse. 3 over square root 13. Which, when we rationalize, is 3 square root 13 over 13. Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Negative 2 over square root 13. Oops. I was jumping to my rationalized form. Rationalized, that is negative 2 square root 13 over 13. Tangent, opposite over adjacent, 3 over negative 2, or negative 3 halves. Cosecant, cosecant. Hypotenuse over opposite, so square root 13 over 3. When you are taking the reciprocal to get cosecant or secant or cotangent, go to your unrationalized version and flip that one, okay? So for secant, we're going to flip this one. So negative square root 13 over 2. For cotangent, negative 2 over 3. Okay, so we found out something a little bit important, quite important. In quadrant 2, in quadrant 2, sine was positive, cosecant was positive, but the other ones were all negative. In quadrant 2, any angle that terminates in quadrant 2 will be like this. Only sine is positive and cosecant. The others are negative. Okay, before we start generalizing that, let's talk more about reference angles though. Let's find the reference angle for a few different angles here. So, 7 pi over 4. 7 pi over 4. Which quadrant is 7 pi over 4 in? Well, I think of it as it's 1 pi over 4 less than 8 pi over 4, so it's 1 pi over 4 less than 2 pi. So that would be over here. This is 7 pi over 4. The reference angle, though, is always formed with the x-axis. That's the reference angle. So how big is that reference angle? pi over 4. That reference angle is pi over 4. Okay, let's do the same thing for in degrees. 230 degrees. Where is that? Which quadrant is that in? Well, it's between 180 and 270. So this is 230 degrees. What is the reference angle? The reference angle is always formed with the x-axis, right here. It's always an acute angle formed with the x-axis, never the y-axis, only the x-axis. So what is that angle right there? If we take, this is 180, how much more does it take from 180 to get to 230? it would take 50 more degrees. So this reference angle is 50 degrees. 6 pi over 11. Which quadrant is 6 pi over 11 in? Well, it's less than pi because 11 pi over 11 would be pi and it's less than that. But it's more than 1 half pi because 6 is a little more than half of 11. So it is somewhere in quadrant 2. 
So this is 6 pi over 11. What is the reference angle? This is the reference angle. What is it? Well, if this is 11 pi over 11, we need this to be 5 pi over 11. If this is 6 pi over 11, then this must be 5 pi over 11. So the reference angle is 5 pi over 11. So that's reference angles. Very important stuff. Okay, let's talk more about signs. I'm wishing I had done this a little bit differently, but I didn't, so oh well. In quadrant one, in quadrant one, let me draw one big grid here. Okay, in quadrant one, our angle would look like this. Okay, so our triangle would look like this. Okay. This would be a positive length. The hypotenuse is always positive. And since we're on the positive, this is going in the positive y direction. This is going in the positive x direction. So in quadrant one, every trig ratio would be positive because we're dealing with all positives. In quadrant one, we are always positive positive and tangent is positive and their reciprocals are also positive. So quadrant one all are positive. All positive. Okay. Let's go to quadrant two. In quadrant two our angle, our triangle would look like that in quadrant two. The hypotenuse is always positive. This side is in the positive y direction, so it is positive. But this side is in the negative x direction, so we assign it negative. Okay, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Positive over positive, that will be positive. Cosine. Cosine is adjacent, adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent over hypotenuse would be neg uh, that would be a negative over a positive, so a negative. Tangent in quadrant two. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Positive over negative, that's going to be negative. So in quadrant two, what is the only positive one? Only sine. Only sine is positive. Okay. Quadrant three. Uh, trying to get some different colors here. Quadrant three. There's what the triangle would look like in quadrant three. The, this adjacent side is still in the negative x direction, that's negative. The opposite side is now in the negative y direction, so it is negative, but the hypotenuse is always positive. Okay, sine. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Negative over positive, that is negative. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Negative over positive is negative. Tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Negative divided by a negative is going to be a positive. So what was the only positive in quadrant three? Only tangent is positive in quadrant three. Lastly, let's take a look at quadrant four. You can probably guess what's going to happen by now. Hopefully you can guess what's going to happen by now. Okay, 
in the, the adjacent side here is in the positive x direction, so it gets a positive. The opposite side is in the negative y direction, it gets a negative, and the hypotenuse always positive. So for sine, opposite over hypotenuse, negative over positive is negative. Cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse, positive over positive, that is positive. Tangent, opposite over adjacent, negative over positive, that is negative. So what was the only positive one in quadrant four? Only cosine. And of course, they're reciprocals. Their reciprocals follow the same sine pattern. So all, only sine, only tangent, only cosine. We need to know that pattern, okay? These are where the trig functions are positive and negative. So tangent and cosine are negative in quadrant two. Things like that. So to help us remember that, we remember all students take calculus. All are positive, only sine is positive, only tangent is positive, only, only <laughs> cosine is positive. Alrighty, let's take a look at some examples, how you might be asked some questions about this. In number four here, they tell me that tangent of theta is negative 8 over 15. And they also tell me that sine of theta is negative. And they're asking me what secant is. Well, if tangent is negative and sine is negative, there is only one quadrant where tangent and sine are both negative, and that is in quadrant four. So my angle must terminate in quadrant four. So there's where my angle terminates. Let's draw our right triangle. Always to the x-axis, you guys. Okay, so I know that this is my theta. But where's my reference angle? My reference angle is right there, okay? Tangent is negative eight over 15. That is opposite over adjacent. Now one of those, one of those is going to be assigned the negative, but not both. Because if they were both negative, this whole thing would be a positive. So only one of them gets assigned that negative. Which one? It's going to be an 8 over a 15. Which one gets the negative? The one in the negative y direction. So what is the hypotenuse here? The hypotenuse is 17 from our Pythagorean triples. Okay. So secant of theta is hypotenuse over adjacent, so secant of theta will be 17 over 15. Now it makes sense that secant is positive because secant has the same sign as cosine, which is positive in quadrant four. Let's do another one. Okay, they tell me that secant is positive. Tangent is negative. Well, if secant is positive, then cosine is positive. Where is cosine positive and tangent negative? Once again, quadrant four. It's the only quadrant where cosine is positive and tangent is negative. So our angle is down here. Secant so our angle goes here. That's our angle. That's really our theta. But where's our reference angle? Our reference angle right here. Okay. Secant is 13 over 12. That is hypotenuse over adjacent. So 13 over 12. 
Okay, what does that make this length? Well, the length must be 5. Since it's going in the negative y direction, I assign it a negative 5. So what is cosecant? Well, cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. So cosecant of theta will be negative 5 over 13. And again, it makes sense that cosecant is negative because sine is negative in quadrant 4. All right, number 6. Cosecant of theta is 5 halves, and theta lies in quadrant 2. This time they're just telling us which quadrant it lies in. We don't have to go figure it out. Quadrant 2. Draw your right triangle. Here's your reference angle. The actual angle is here. This is the reference angle. Cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. So 5 over 2. Both positive. Hypotenuse always positive. This is in the positive y direction. This length will be the square root of 25 minus 4. 25 minus 4 is 21. We assign this a negative because it's in the negative x direction. And cosine of theta will be adjacent over hypotenuse negative square root 21 over 5. Number 7. Sine of theta is negative 3 fifths, and theta lies in quadrant 4. Quadrant 4. So there's your theta, goes all the way around, but here's your reference angle. We make a right triangle with the x-axis. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, 3 over 5. One of those is negative, and it's never the hypotenuse, like that. This is a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. That will be positive, since it's in the positive x direction. And tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent, negative 3 over 4. One more. Tangent of theta is one-third, and theta is between pi and 3 pi over 2. What quadrant does that make theta in? Well, that is an inequality representation of quadrant 3. So we're going to go put theta in quadrant 3. So theta goes all the way around from the initial side to the terminal side. But the reference angle is right here, and that is the acute angle formed with the right with the x-axis. We make a triangle to the x a, a, a right triangle, a right angle with the x-axis. Okay, tangent opposite over adjacent one over three. That makes our hypotenuse, this is not a special a Pythagorean triple, that makes our hypotenuse 9 plus 1, so square root of 10. And cosine of theta will be, okay, I almost forgot my negative on that 3. Now, if you did, if you did forget to write a negative on the 3 or the 1, if you forgot to write it, Hopefully you would remember that cosine is negative in this quadrant. So I know that cosine is going to be negative in quadrant 3. And then I can just use the numbers. Adjacent over hypotenuse, 3 over square root 10. So negative 3 square root 10 over 10. And that, um, that is our lesson on the trig functions on, in the coordinate plane, or on the coordinate plane.